el torito. When I was young, I always wanted to paint, but my mother wanted to discourage me from painting because I had an elder sister who ran around with a lot of the artists. And mother always said, well, they paint with oils and the oils and all that affect the brain and most of them are crazier than heck. So mother was scared I'd be going that way. I first started doing Matachinas when I saw them dancing at Los Colondrinas. I was so fascinated by them. The rhythm, the music, the ribbons, the, it was just, it almost hypnotizes you. You just can't help but wanting to see more and more. It's something really spectacular and one should see them if you can, because there's nothing like the Matachinas to me. I try not to get the greens too close. If you notice, I have a red shawl, the green, the pink, black, so the colors keep separating. Then we go to orange, which is with close to the reds, your purple, yellow, red again, and then blue and your green. And your monarch is usually all in white. His cape is done in gold and he's got his crown here. Now after I do these, I'll start painting the shirts. Matajinas are usually danced on feast days and during the holy day of the church or the saint day. The Matajinas were probably performing since my family first came with the early conquistadores and that would have been 1598. Then, what I do, I'll turn my tin over this way. I get a marker. Man, I got a thick one there. And then I do my scallops. Then I cut each one. Once it's done, then I get this little board. I put it across and then I start making my little holes so that I can just nail them on. And the finished one will look like this. Now here we have the monaca, which is your monarch, the um, Torito, which is a little boy dressed like a bull. Then we have your abuelo, which is the boogeyman, and abuelo also means grandfather. We also have our Malinche, which is a little girl dressed in her communion dress. She represents innocence and Christianity. This is an image uh, well known for. This is Santa Librata. She is the patron saint of liberated women. Santa Librada was crucified by her dad because she was very beautiful. She was a Christian. Her dad wanted her to marry a pagan chieftain. She didn't want to marry him, so she prayed to God that he'd make her ugly so the chieftain wouldn't want her, and she grew a beard. Although I do not paint her with the beard, I just can't bring myself to doing that. Now, you notice I did flowers on the cross because I figured any woman on a cross should have flowers on that cross. This one is Noah with his animals, or his feathered animals. And um, this design I took from the St. Martin Church in Venice. But if you notice the tin around it says two by two, which I pounded with my nail pounder. Let's leave this white. White? And this will be red, okay? So grab them. Yeah. Are the vines going all the way down? To yes, the vine comes from the bottom on the, all the way up. Besides doing my own thing, I teach the children the traditional arts, which I love doing. I taught their parents to do this, and now I'm teaching them. This could be a little more even. Yeah. Try using the ruler. Okay. okay? And remember, you do have a frame around your window. All right. All right? The blue here, the red here. Okay. I enjoy teaching them the traditional art because it's a dying art. And this way, teaching the children, they can continue doing it and teach their children or someone else. So the art will be going on. 
The very first piece the children do, I buy and put on the wall so I can always keep it as a memory. It represents the work of the children and the beautiful times we had while they were learning. Now a lot of them are now married, some in college, and they're all away, but I still have the work they first did. So it's really very daring to me. This is Sydney's piece, my granddaughter, and it's the Noah's Ark, and if you notice, her frame all says two by two. Of course, the animals are their own style. If you see the, the alligators and the pigs with oversized large ears, but that's their interpretation of the animals as they do them, and I leave them very much do their own thing because this is part of them. And seeing them do it brings quite an enjoyment to me. Do you have a, a little signature of a little particular item you put in any of your pieces? Oh, I, didn't I usually know put that. like a calico cap. I love seeing them at the youth Spanish market selling because they are also carrying on a tradition. Good work, girls and boys. Makes me feel very proud. Very pretty. The Santa Fe Spanish Market started in 1926. Take a closer look at the birds. Yeah. This is Noah. It is now the biggest market that has preserved the Spanish culture. So, and you're Monica? I'm Monica. Mm -hmm. So, people do come from all over to buy. It's 200. And he's down on hide. Cowhide? I don't know. I just bought the hide. I think it's cowhide. I usually tell them when they buy a piece, I hope that when they hang it up, it brings happiness oh, and peace to their home. I'll let you take it. Are you having fun at the market? Knowing, you know, that they're buying them and appreciate the art makes me feel very good. When I first joined Spanish Market, we were about 66 artists. Now we're over 200. Every year they do assign us our same spot. It's kind of like an artist or family reunion. We keep up with who got married, who had a baby, and what's happened. It's just one big family and we love being together. Most of us artists get along with other artists and we do a lot of trading, we do a lot of partying, and it's more an extended family. At Spanish Market, being the traditional market, most of the paintings and the work done are saints. With all this, I have been able to acquire tin work, bultos, inlaid straw work, crosses. There's been all types of work that we've done at Spanish Market. It feels wonderful because every time I see a piece, it always brings pleasant memories of when we trade it and the person. And it's just like having your family here with you. My walls by my bed to me are like my living altar. I look at it and I see all the beautiful saints, crosses and all, and all of these were done by very dear friends. So it's just a wall of love and memories. When I'm painting and I'm working on a saint, I try to do my best to make this saint as beautiful as I can, because usually I'm always praying to these saints and asking them favors. And I feel very close to them. It's almost like working with the family. I enjoy doing it. It makes me feel good that I'm preserving it. And I figure I have some pieces now at the museums, in churches, collectors. and. There was a statement one time made that artists are vain, that we like, we like our pieces to remain, you know, after we're gone. And that's how I feel. I'll be gone, but my pieces will still be there. So it's like, well, my work lives on, and, the, you know, my children will see it, grandchildren. And it just makes me feel good that what I do will, you know, live on.